Hello, welcome back to Cindy's library. And today I want to talk about The Scent of Water by Elizabeth Googe. This was a wonderful Elizabeth Googe. So this is oh, not too long after World War II, might be the 1950s. But it is a story of Mary Lindsay. She has lived in London pretty much her own whole life. Uh, she had a career, I think in education and then in government and everything. And then her, I think it's her great aunt. No, it's her aunt. Her aunt, which she only saw once in her life and who shares the same name with her, uh, Mary Lindsay, she leaves our heroine uh, a little cottage in a little English country town. And so Mary is in her 40s, I think, something like that. She ends up leaving everything and moving to this little town and so it's full of everything you might expect there interesting characters how they interact with each other uh, mary lindsay discovers about her aunt mary lindsay what led her to live in this little town and her life story uh, a few things about the town You've got the woman next door with three children that she doesn't know quite what to do with, and the children like to play in uh, Mary's garden. You've got the blind author and his wife who are not very happy together currently. You've got the old couple with almost nothing but each other. You've got the stern vicar and his timid sister. You've got the squire and his wife. And it just goes on and on and on with all of these characters. And it is wonderful. Oh, but... Yeah. As usual with an Elizabeth Googe book, you find amazing descriptions, including what the scent of water means. And you also get some stories about this village, some of the oldest buildings and things like that. And it's history. So, very wonderful. This is probably one of my favorite Elizabeth Googe's so far. Oh, and along with the house, uh, Mary's aunt also leaves her a little cabinet filled with little things, little figurines of all sorts of different types. And one of the favorites is the uh, Queen Mab in a little coach, and I forget what the other one is. Those are Mary's two favorite that she fell in love with. The only one, in, the only trip that she ever saw her Aunt Mary at as a little girl. So, uh, if you are wanting sweet, historical, slow, thoughtful, if you love Elizabeth Googe already yet, yeah, but haven't tried this one, this book is for you. That is one thing I have found about Elizabeth Googe, though. They aren't necessarily books that you can race through, and they aren't necessarily books that you can read one after another. They seem to be books that need to be savored. That's okay because we like savoring books sometimes over here at Cindy's library. So, see, where would I rank this of the Elizabeth Gooch books that I have read so far? 
discounting the younger books, of course. Dean's Watch is still my favorite, I think. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, the Town in the Mist. Towers in the Mist. I think I liked it better than that one. And, oh, Castle on a Hill might be about equal with that one. Yeah. So that is where things stand so far. Anyway, I finally finished another Elizabeth Gooch. I may or may not finish another one before the end of the year. If I do, it'll probably be the Rosemary Tree. But in any case, oh, what's your favorite Elizabeth Gooch book? I would love to hear the answer to that. Like I said, I'm thinking of reading the Rosemary Tree yet. But if you have when you think I should read first, feel free to suggest that. Feel free to leave suggestions and comments below. Truly appreciate you stopping by Cindy's library today. It really means a lot to me. So, that's all for today. So until next time, I hope we all stay healthy and safe. And as always, happy reading.